Hey everybody, it's the Draft is Cool pod- podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my, my friend Amelia is here with us today. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, yeah. You're doing pretty good? Okay. So uh, Amelia is a freshman in college, and um, it's it's always for, sort of fun for me to talk with Amelia because we get to talk about the things that are sort of going on in her life. We get to talk about the things that that um, confront us as, as Christians, as young adults, um, and it's, it's just sort of always fun to to explore and defend where Christ is um, and, and how to think and how to feel and how to talk about some of these issues. Uh, so I figured that uh, obviously the whole internet should get to eavesdrop. So um, how's it going, Amelia? What's been going on in school? Yeah, so it's it's been pretty good. I would say it's been amazing. But we did have one like big thing actually happen where one of our mentors in our college died. And Hmm. this was especially difficult um, because the way that our college is set up is that a mentor is um, set with each person individually. So there is a lot of mentees with uh, Dr. Barry. And this was a really hard time for all of us who many of them looked to her as like a close friend and someone who made them who they are today. So it was a struggle to see the upperclassmen who knew her better grieving and just having to figure out us as freshmen like that too was just it was hard sure um I, I mean for a lot of people too this might even be one of the first sort of real experiences with, with death um can i can i ask i i it hate i hate that we talk about it this way but there are almost some deaths that are that are easier for us to process too when when somebody makes it to 90 and they sort of you know they go in their sleep surrounded by their family we can say that was a that was an all right death where where mm-hmm. when we have somebody who's who's younger we 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 struggle with it a little bit more um but it 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 changes a little bit how we we want to talk about it um even if it doesn't change what's real about it right right yeah so can i can i ask how old she was so she was probably actually younger than my parents in her late 30s, early 40s. She had two uh, twin 10-year-old daughters um, and leaving a loving husband behind as well. Lord so have it mercy. Was, yeah. It was, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you, Lord have mercy. So when we talk about this, um, I think probably – we we are so overpowered by what's wrong with the situation that um as Christians one of the first things we end up trying to do is defend God in the middle of it you know what i mean because like that's that's not one of those okay deaths that that's not one that that anybody can sort of reason with or make sense with that's not one where you can look at sort of the wreckage of what's left behind not only with with her work with all the people that she cared for but with her family and, and say this is how it's supposed to be um there is clearly a plan here um when we when we have this kind of language, I, I think probably one of the most important things to recognize is that God hates this death every bit as much as we do, if not more. Mm-hmm. Um, when we sort of talk about this as according to sort of according to God's plan, um, you have to reckon with the scriptures that speak very differently. I, I mean, the 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 Lord speaks through uh, the prophet Ezekiel that he has no desire of the death, even of the wicked, but that they would turn from their way and live. Uh, Jesus weeps at, at the the grave of his friend Lazarus. Um, God hates death so much that he calls it the last great enemy. Um, and, and it's never a friend, even to Christians. Um, you, you're allowed to sort of reckon with this as a terrible tragedy um, because you, you get to recognize that that God is just as upset with it as you are. Um, and the reason I, I wonder if we, we don't sort of get stuck trying to defend him is because like I would have stopped it if I could. <laughs> I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas if we're willing to let him be all powerful, you sort of have to reckon with the fact that he didn't. Um, yeah, that is, that is very difficult, especially like in light of this is just all a part of the sinful condition, right? We're all under sin, so it, it it's sad for God that we are sinful and that mm-hmm. we have to die. Like that's not how it was meant to be, right? Right. And what's wonderful here is now we don't get to play blame because when when we have God who is upset about the sinful condition, we're already inside of the gospel narrative. We know what he did about it. When when God hated this, it, it's not just sort of that he would sort of edit undo. It, it's not just that he would sort of cause a different path to leave us to make it to 80 or 90 and, and go peacefully in our sleep. But but he actually, he, he dives into the wreckage himself, into the suffering and the death. He, he dies th- that we would live. 
um, when God is is furious with death, he faces it head on himself. It's it's now then not a a stranger to our religion, but it's actually sort of one of the tenets. We die mm-hmm. and then we rise. And it's not how it's supposed to be, but it's how God saves us. It would have been better if there were just no sin. It would have been better if, if uh, there was just no tragedy. But what we have in the middle of it, though, is a God who won't let tragedy stop him, stop him from mm-hmm. saving us and, and won't let tragedy stop us from being together. That there, there's a, a promise that that he makes now um, in the face of all of these things uh, that that the baptism connects us, that the baptism unites us not only to Jesus' death, but also to his resurrection. And if we're like in this side of glory or already united to the resurrection, that means that we we don't mourn alone, but we also, we get to celebrate the victory even while we we, we mourn our loss. Death is the enemy, but it's the defeated one now. If, if Jesus has already died, already forgiven our sins, already risen, then I still get to hate death, but I never have to be afraid of it now because it's it tries to sting us, but it, it can't. It, Jesus is just going to have to come and, and make us alive again. Um, but he's already promised it. He's already won it. He's already baptized us into it. Um, but we, we never really want to be in a place where we have to try and reckon with God's will when it comes to these things because, well, he hates it too. <laughs> yeah. That is something that I caught even myself doing like a little bit where it's just like, why her like and then thinking to myself like it could have been anyone it was a it was a vehicle pedestrian uh accident Mm -hmm. so yeah and just thinking like if it was on campus or somewhere around here she was walking home like it could have been me it could have been some of my best friends um and just dealing with the shock of that was just like wow and so then kind of being like god why why her like blaming him in some ways which obviously is not the thing to do <laughs> so it's, like it's, it, you yeah know. You, you know the story of job right um <laughs> so uh job loses so many things and we we get caught up in the details of it and miss the, the grand picture of it but but sort of uh god and the devil make a bet that that job's faithfulness would not endure suffering and so um God, of course, being God already knows how this is going to end. I feel like it's cheating, but we sort of feel like it's a fair, like it's a toss up. Who could tell? Um, but but Job loses his family. His his wife uh, mocks him and tells him to curse God and die. He loses all of his land, all of his property. He loses his health. Um, and at the end, um, he, he is preserved in faithfulness by the grace of God. And he gets all of his land back times two, all of his, his house back times two, everything, except he only gets seven more kids because... They don't need to be doubled. In faith, they're preserved. He, he's the one who says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And, and that means that even cut off from the veil, we're not cut off. But at the very end of the book, um, Job dares to sort of say, why did you have to go and do this? And God yells at him. It's like the first time God just yells at him and says, like, were you there when I made all these things? Were you there when I figured it out? Were you, are you God? Do you understand these that you would question me? And we always sort of recoil at this. Um, but I think it's not just sort of the question of who is smarter, you or God, but I, I think it's actually uh, the question of his compassion that that is the thing that really sort of sets him off. Um, it's not like God was just sort of ignorant or or, or willing to see Job suffer, but but rather I, I think it was that the idea that that God would want Job to to lose these things. Mm. Um, God's plan is not simply to let the good preserve their goodness, but it's to reward sinners and save sinners. And that means even the people who take, even the people who lose, God's will uh, is is to see what is lost restored. And if you ever question like, you, you wanted it that way? It's like, is that really it? Like, that's what upsets him because of course he doesn't want it that way. Um, he, he weeps over the tomb. He, he, he literally dives into the tomb to push us back out of it. Um, and so you're allowed to sort of wrestle with the idea, but, but the answer is though not gonna be found so much in like, why did this happen? But but who? Who is your God? And that's where the comfort starting is going to start to, to lay itself out. When when terrible things are happening, you get to say, well, the universe is complex and every, that there's a plan that I don't understand, but it doesn't make you feel better. But but who is your God? Uh, Amelia, is, is yours the God who, who conquered death or not? Is yours the God who, who hates death or not? Is yours the God who promises to, to unite us back side by side at the rail where he feeds us his body and blood and wipe away every tear? Um, the, the who is, is actually the, the better thing. Uh, some things in this world, even when you know exactly why they have to happen don't make them actually any more pleasant but knowing who's with you that might just yeah that's 
that's honestly that's like such a wonderful way to think about it um i think a lot of people that i've seen have struggled thinking about it like that because obviously you don't want to think that you want god to have at you and everything and that everything is always going to go right and you want that to happen but i mean that's not how sin works um that's the right answer because yeah you know the right way to do things there's 10 simple rules to just do the right thing how's that going i'm I'm doing terrible at it i don't know about you um exactly so so if god's gonna just sort of leave us to what's right um well what's right would actually probably be to to just condemn us to hell a lot sooner but we have a god who cares about what's good and that means saving us from the tragedies both that we commit ourselves and the ones that are committed against us so lord have mercy for 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 your mentor lord have mercy for her family and lord have mercy for the driver of that car who now has to sort of wrestle with the guilt of of everything mm-hmm. that comes along with that but but the answer to that is is again where is god in this and and, and he's he's on the cross he's bearing guilt he's conquering death and he's promising that that this is for this and every other tragedy so that we would never be alone in it because if he were to set this thing aright just perfect and and completely erase this one sooner or later what somebody else is going to mess it up i want to know who god is not just what his plan is i'm not smart enough to figure it out i can hardly work the the washing machine most of the time but but i know who my god is he's the one who who would would literally die just so that so that we would live yeah that's amazing. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to hang on to that. Um, so this is a heavy one to start out with, but um, Amelia, can we check in throughout the school year and just sort of see how things are going, what you're up to and talk about it? I would really appreciate that. Yeah, awesome. I would like that a lot. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out today. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Thank you.